Life is easier if you have good unit tests, but if you're working with code that wasn't designed with tests from the start, then that can be hard work. There are some refactorings that are safe enough to do even when you haven't got test coverage. These dependency breaking techniques can help you to get something in place so you can begin improving your design. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate one of them, extract and override. And I'll be using the classic exercise, trip service. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. Extract and override. It's one of the classic dependency breaking techniques from Michael Feather's book, Working Effectively with Legacy Code. And it's particularly useful when you've got a long method that you wanna get under test with some important logic in it, but buried in the middle, you've got calls out to awkward dependencies to fetch things that you need. And you wanna test the important logic and replace those awkward dependencies with some kind of test double or mock so that you can get the thing under test. The trip service exercise was originally designed by Sandro Mancuso to demonstrate exactly this scenario. Mancuso wrote this code more than 15 years ago and he's got a video elsewhere on YouTube where he shows how to use extract and override to get it under test. So my task today is to show the same problem and the same solution, but with more up-to-date tools and programming language. And then I'd like to look at alternatives, another dependency breaking technique that you could use in the same situation. This is the classic exercise by Sandro Mancuso. All I've done is allow it to use a newer version of Java, and I'm just gonna do some initial cleanups just to make this look a little bit more like modern Java. I'm not gonna do anything that I would need test cases for because there aren't any, but I just feel I can use my tools to just um, change the for loop into a stream, and add, add the odd var here and there, just so it looks a little bit more familiar to modern Java programmers. But that's exactly the same code. The test case is entirely empty. First, we need to read the code and work out what would be the simplest test to write here. So we've got get trips by user with this user argument. We first construct a trip list, which is actually the thing we return down here. Then we find out the logged user from the user session and declare this for Boolean. Now, if the logged user is not equal to null, then we do some stuff. Otherwise, we throw an exception. So if it is null, then throwing an exception, that's, that's probably a path through the code that's pretty short that we could test. But if we just look at the other paths, if, if, if it's not null, then we, we, uh, we get the friends of the user that was the argument and checked if they are friends with the logged user. And if they are friends, then we go away and find the, the trips and return them. So that's what the method does. So the first test I wanted to write then was uh, when the logged user was null, at which point it should throw exception. So I just went away and wrote that unit test for the case when the logged user is null, that it should expect this exception. Unfortunately, it doesn't pass straight off. And that's because we run into the first challenge with this exercise. In the trip service, we're getting the, the logged user from the user session. And this method get logged user is deliberately designed that you can't call it from a unit test. So, so this test doesn't work. So we need to find a way to handle this dependency on user session. When Mancuso shows the solution to this, he uses a technique called extract and override. So that's the first way I'm going to show you to solve this. The first step is as it sounds, we extract a method. Get logged user, sounds good enough. Unfortunately, we don't want it to be static and we want it to be protected, not, not private. But still, that was a fairly safe refactoring, just extracting a method. The next step is when we do the override. And this is in the test case. Instead of constructing an actual trip service, we're going to construct a subclass, a testable trip service. So this class doesn't exist. Let me go and create that. And then the other thing about it is it needs to extend the original trip service class. So this testable trip service at the moment doesn't do anything at all but it allows us an opportunity now to do the second part of that technique, extract and override, we can do the override. So that method we just extracted, get logged user, we can uh, call an overrided version of that, 
and our version in the test then is going to return null for that logged user. So if I go back to the, uh, the test case, you can see I've got my, my service and when I call get trips by user, it's no longer hopefully going to run into that bit of awkward code. So when I run this, this one passes, it does throw the expected exception. So that was extract and override. There's more work to be done here though. There's additional test cases needed. So in this method, we've only so far tested the case when the logged user was null. There are a couple of in interesting cases when logged user is not null. The thing we do is check whether it's friends with the user that we passed in. And if it is, we go and find the trip list for that user and return it. So there are at least two more test cases here. We need the case when the logged user is friends with the passed in user and the case when they're not friends. So I went away and actually wrote those tests or at least made a start on them. The first one for when they are not friends and we get no trips. So I'm expecting zero trips to be returned. And then the case where they are friends. So I've added this line here that they, they are friends. So we expect to get back some trips in this test. Now, when I run all of these tests, um, unfortunately, of course, we run into the next challenge with the exercise. And that is that we've got another bad collaborator that we can't have any unit test in the form of the trip data access object. So this one can't be invoked on a unit test either. So that's the, the problem. It's, it's this piece of code here. Now, in order to write these two tests, I'm going to need to deal with this awkward dependency. And again, I'm going to use the extract and override technique. So the first step, extract method, uh, get get trips, I think is a good name for that. And again, I don't want it to be static and I do want it to be protected so that I can then override that. Now, I've been doing a little bit of work on my testable trip service that uh, you may not have seen because I did it while I was writing the tests. Basically, I've just added this construct argument so we can pass in what the logged user should be. So it just returns that as an argument. But uh, that's how this class looks. It's not doing anything too complicated, I think. But now we've done the first part of the extract and override for the, the trips. The second part is to do the override. So it's get trips that we want to override. And instead of calling the super class, we want to return uh, some trips and uh, that needs to be a, a data member here that we can uh, return and that the test can set in the constructor, just the same as with the logged user. So I'll just go away and do that. So I've just added this constructor argument so I can set the list of trips from, from the test. And then I've gone away and updated the test so that here in this test I was just working on, I can pass in the trips that I want to be returned from that method. And I can then check that it's all being wired up properly and I get the, the, the right result. So now when I run this test, all three of these are passing. So I've solved the, the dependency problems in trip service using extract and override, which means I need to extract two methods, which I can then override in my test. I hope that helps you to see what this technique is now. And if you like this video today, do remember to click like and subscribe. And you could head over to the Saman Coaching website to find more materials for teaching and learning refactoring. Do sign up for the newsletter, so keep up to date. So we're first extracting a method that holds the awkward code that you can't have in a unit test. And then you create a subclass that overrides that method just for the test case. And this extract method refactoring is relatively safe and the subclass is not used in the normal production code. So overall, this is a pretty safe dependency breaking technique. But you may have noticed the design you end up with at the end is not really any good, which to be honest is normal for a dependency breaking technique because your priority is safe change that will allow you to write tests. And then when you've got those, you can go ahead and really start improving the design. So this technique is helping you in the right direction. But having said that, we have much better refactoring tools today and our programming languages have more powerful features. So today I might not choose to use extract and override. I might prefer to try extract and move. So the problem with this is we've got this line of code and this line of code, which are difficult to use in a unit test. 
So these are the ones I want to fix with the extract and move refactoring. The first step is to extract that method, get logged user. And the next step is now to create a class that I can move that to. So I'm going to imagine I had a class user service, which sounds like the kind of class that might have a method get logged user. So that doesn't exist, but I can very quickly create that with my tools. Uh, pretty safe to do. And then I want to move this method to it. And a trick that I, I use is basically if I put that as an argument to that method, um, that's safe enough to fix up. It's, it's now got an unused argument. But that means that when I ask it to move that, it offers user service as, as an option, um, which is quite straightforward. And then it's static here still, but I can pretty easily change that to an instance method because I've got the instance of, of user service in the, in the argument list. So now I've got this new user service class with this method get logged user. This is the kind of class that I could replace with a mock in my test. And I could do that without uh, hopefully impacting the trip service. Well, except I can't do that yet because I've still got this line here where I construct the thing. So I need a, a seam to be able to inject a different instance. So I'm going to turn this into a field. It would also work to make it a, just a parameter to the method, but it makes more sense to me that this should be a field. And I want to um, assign that in the field declaration. And then I want to move that into the constructor. And then I want to make this an argument to the constructor. So now my trip service has an explicit dependency on a user service, which it can use to get the logged user. And this is a very appropriate seam to insert a mock for that. So that was extract and move. So now I could go and write that test for when the logged user is null. But I've still got this other dependency here on the trip data access object, which needs sorting out. And you could do exactly the same with this, extract and move. But I'll leave that as an exercise to you to do that and write those tests after you've done the extract and move. So that's an alternative. With modern tools, I think extract and move can be just as safe as extract and override. You're taking small steps using tool supported refactorings, ones that perhaps weren't reliable in Michael Feather's day, including move, make non-static, introduce field, introduce parameter. The main advantage over extract and override is you get to a more separated design sooner. I don't need to replace the class under test with a subclass in the test. I can use a separate test double or mock and keep the class under test the same type as the one I use in production. If you want to try this for yourself, you can get the code for this exercise from Sandro Mancuso or from my GitHub. And over on the Saman Coaching website, there are materials for how you could use this as part of a learning hour with your colleagues, as well as loads of other useful resources for technical coaching. Happy coding! <laughs>